Okay, so lots of technical issues today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots yeah. of different types of technical issues. That's it, man. But you're Jay Faded, you're from Northampton, am I right? You're right, yeah, man. And you are killing it right now, baseline scene, yeah? So I just want to t- go back to start of 2020, because obviously things were very different at the start of 2020 to as they are now. Yeah. Um, did you sort of like set yourself any big goals going forward for this year? Um, <clears throat> my main goal was really just to kind of line up 2021, get loads of releases, as many as I can, try like reach labels I haven't been with before. And um, it's going well, it's going well, you know. I don't want to let too yeah. much out of the bag, but... Yeah, it's going really well. Of course, of course. So, so, from the goals that you set, are there any that you've already sort of like smashed through? Smashed through them and then we're surpassing them. Yeah, we're good. Okay. It's good. It's nice, good. We've got nice, loads nice. of new music coming out, man. Loads of different flavors, Amazing. different layers. It's looking really healthy, man. I'm really excited for the future. So then, with that in mind, COVID comes along, lockdown happens. How did how did that affect you and your day to day life and producing? Ah uh, well, <clears throat> to be fair, it gave me a lot more time to produce. So, like obviously, COVID is really bad and whatnot, whatnot. But it was a bit of a blessing in disguise because I was actually going to start working for like a construction company. So I thought, you know, like music was going well, but it was really tough at the time. Didn't know what was going to happen with it. And then COVID came along. I produced a lot of stuff, and then just stuff started happening and. Good things happen, man. Good things happen. Yeah. You seem like a, ve- a very, like, positive uh, guy who always looks on, like, the brighter side of things. So have you sort of come out of lockdown and that, uh, say, feeling like you've made the most out of that, that situation? Yeah, of course, man. Of course. You got you can't be doom and gloom, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's gotta, nice. you've got to stay positive and happy, man. Look at the light at the end of the tunnel and that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And you, you've had a bunch. Of, I've got your, uh, your beat port and your uh, Spotify and your SoundCloud up on my laptop here. And you've had a bunch of different releases were any of them like a, a lockdown production or is that stuff that's yet to come out uh nah so the first of lockdown productions is actually ripped of roses which is out tomorrow okay. and then after that we've got the lockdown stuff where i really put my head down like oh, it's it's my best work so far i'm really excited for everyone sick. Doing it, man. It's sick. okay that's sick so yeah ripped up roses by the time this comes out that will have dropped uh, yeah, make sure you that, stream that as well if you're watching this. Of course, of course. <laughs> got, got to plug that, got to plug that. Uh, that will have definitely featured in Buzzchart on Monday as well. So we'll be pushing that. Um, that one comes out on Yosh. Yes. And looking down your releases, Yosh has sort of been the label that you've you've been with quite consistently this year. Yeah, yeah. Is is there a reason that you've stuck with this label? Do their sort of philosophies match yours? or? Yeah, man, there's a bunch of good guys down there that have my back in that. And... Um... Do you know what I mean? They just look out for me time when times are hard. So, yeah, and they've got me shows, good lads, good mentors and that, good good advice. So, yeah, man, they, yeah, it's just... How, how did you first get in contact with them? Do you know what? I feel... I can't actually remember. I think I must have sent a tune to four ages ago. It must have been about two, three years ago. And he was like, this is sick. Like, I think it might have been dirt, actually. And he was like, do you want to do, do an EP? And I was like, yeah. So a sort of bit of background there people who didn't know that Yosh is uh, sort of r- uh, ran by yeah, yeah, yeah. ran by Ford, yeah, yeah. Ran by uh, Gavin Ford the, obviously the frontman of Four and a couple other uh, guys uh, so you sent a tune to Four and he then recommended it for the label Yosh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and that, yeah that tune Dirt that was uh, that's a few years ago now uh, but I used to I used to rinse that one in my set. So that was hey, a bang, God, a banger. Love, love, but, so how long have you been producing? Because uh, your Spotify only goes down to 2015. Have you been doing bits before then, or is that sort of the start of the J Faded career? Um, so I started producing when I was about 16. It was like little rap beats and trap beats, and like, I had various other little names. I'm not going to say them because the tune <laughs> shit. So yeah, but yeah, J Faded kind of. I think it was born around. I'm thinking around 2017, maybe early 2016. It's you know, okay. like when the new bass era just started to come in and like. Yeah, because yeah, I, I wrote down that you sort of what came in at that time where bassline really started to gain momentum as a genre. Yeah. So from then, in the last three, four years, yeah. what sort of your thoughts on the way that the genre's like grown hugely and all the new wave of artists that have come with it? I think it's 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 doing sick now. Like before. Baseline was, it was like, when it first started off, it was just an up north thing, and then it slowly grew around the UK, and now 
now you see it getting played in America, Europe, like set everywhere, do you know what I mean? So I think the genre is doing really well. Like there's always different producers doing different things, different styles, different flavours and everyone's I think everyone's absolutely smashing it right now. It's really good for the growth, man. Who are you listening to at the minute then? Uh New Bass, Depths, Holy Goof, Notion, NLMT, I really love his music. Uh, that's off the top of my head. I can't really feel. Oh, yeah, KDYN Cookie, they're absolutely fucking smashing it. They're new. Yeah. They're running. They, I think they've done um, Crewcast and Josh Lessick loving them. Lots, lots of young guys coming up. Yeah, as yeah, well, they're doing. They? Yeah, KDYN, but these are ridiculous. Man. I love yeah, these. Yeah, cold, cold. Yeah, man. But going back to like the releases uh, this year, it seems like you've sort of like personally from a like a, a fan's point of view it seems that you're making like the best music of your career now and you've sort of like flourished and you've you've kind of got your unique your your sound now yeah, yeah, has it, have you sort of felt that that's a natural progression or have you changed something in the way that you've worked and um produced? well i'll be honest over lockdown like, like i said i had loads of time to like like work on my sound like really dig my nails into sound design and like structuring of songs and also, I had a new manager come along, kick me up my ass, and like, it's time to get in action. So, yeah, he's been a massive part of it as well. But, yeah, man, like, yeah, just, just trying to just do my best stuff, really, man. Just keep my head down and do the best music I can make. So, the sort of look of your artworks and everything, is that a conscious decision to keep that sort of, like, you've got that, like, cartoon style with all your Yosh works? Is that, like, a conscious decision to keep that, like... Yeah, 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 for now it is. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll see where nice. things head in the future. But, yeah, yeah, I'm liking that design right now. So from a from like a, a producer's point of view, especially someone just starting out uh, like myself and like lots of people in the scene, what sort of like you said a manager came along uh, and he's giving you a kick up the ass as it was. Uh, what what's it like before having a manager and why did you decide that manager was the way to go or did someone approach you? How does it work? Um, well, it's quite natural. I met my manager. Like, I seen him one time. We started speaking, showing him numbers, and he was doing work with other artists. He's low, he was uh, lives around Northampton as well. So that's how that came. it was like a natural, organic thing that happened, and uh, quite lucky as well, to be fair. But before that, <clears throat> um, mostly I was releasing like bootlegs. Like I would recommend it, but at the same time, don't because I thought like in my own head I got just labelled as a bootlegger like I, won't, I didn't have much like ma- like material out there for like Spotify and it, I think yeah it's good to get your name out there with making bootlegs and stuff but also like maybe drop a bootleg like a free one like every like three months and mostly work on your own catalogue and your own sound and like send your tunes to as many producers as you can and just get them to like absolutely rip the shit out of it though you know what I mean not not be like this tune shit but like do you know what I mean like give you some nice criticism with it I think that's the best way as well. Like a lot of guys in the scene been helping me uh, with feedback and that as well. Who who do you have sort of like a set uh, group of people that you send tunes to to get their feedback from? Uh yeah, a couple man, yeah, yeah man. Nice. Oh, your lights gone off. There we go. Um, obviously, I said your your sounds come out now and it's sort of like developing and it's sounding like a lot cleaner than some of the the old stuff. Who was like your early influences, and uh, how did you go from producing those like trap and trap beats, as you said, into like bassline? Because they're quite different styles. Yeah, um, I'll be honest. This is a sound pretty rude of me, but I'd, I'd kind of like to take myself out of the bassline scene and then like fuck with other genres because I see like a lot of people always cut each other's styles and. For me, like I could easily like keep rinsing off the dirt synth, but me, I don't. That's not. That's not. I don't like to do things. I like to keep my sound up to date, fresh, new, and do you know what I mean. Not not knowing what's gonna come. So yeah. yeah, and and just listening back to your twenty twenty releases, you can see that pretty much every like synth is different, and you're sort of showing that you've got that versatility that even within baseline to produce like different like sub sub genres, if that's even a thing. Let's talk about your new single coming out Friday. It will be out by this point. Um, what's it called? How did it, It's your first lockdown one. Is it your biggest yet? Um, I think, yes, yeah, one of my favourites. So it's my first tune of my lockdown productions getting dropped. Um, I'm really happy with it. It's sick. Like, it's different. I've gone a whole different direction with what I've done with this tune. And it was just like it was just, it was just a natural tune I made really like I think I started it like I think I actually started it before lockdown and I came back to it, I thought right what could I do with this because it was an interesting intro 
And then with the skills I've learned over the past like, three or four months, I was interpreted into a new production and it just, it went really well, man, fucking. Sure. So it's called Ripped Up Roses. It's out on Yosh. Um, and it's a bit more of a darker sound to the last side. The sort of dark side of UK bass has been really popping at the minute. Guys like you mentioned, New Bass, Depths, Digital Koala, people like these are really taking this sound. Is that a sort of progression that that's the avenue you want to go down or yeah. are you just going to switch it up every time? I mean, like, it's, it's not like I'm deliberately trying to go. It's like I get in a studio and I kind of make what I make and if it comes out how it comes out, but like, I just I want to just push the scene as a whole, really, not just like the dark sound. Like I just want to like the bass line, bass scene, just everyone just kind of move with each other. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, it's, it's everyone always tries to like put boundaries on things and try to say he's bass house and he's bass line, he's UK. Like, fuck all that. Like, it's all just UK bass music. Do you know what I mean? It's just bass music, isn't it? And the more yeah, you put boundaries on it, then, do you know what I mean? It's just this music, man. Let's all get it out of there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Well, how how are you finding sort of like promoing your tunes and getting them out with there being no live shows at the minute? Uh, yeah, so um, luckily my manager used to be a creative director as well, so I've got that. So, all right. So, where were we? We we're saying about promoing your new tunes with it being uh, no live shows. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, normally it would be like back in the, when it was no COVID, it'd be like we're going to shows, I'm a videographer, then I'll record the shows getting played live, and that would be like my main way of like getting new tunes out of there. But obviously, with all this COVID shit, there's no live shows really apart from little social distancing ones, and they're very limited themselves. So, yeah, like I said, my manager was a creative director, so that's really come in handy. Like, he's, he's good with what he does, and yeah, I suppose it. Yeah, I like making music and stuff, but I find it hard at the same time to find so like that connection between like the content and the music if there's no live shows kind of thing. So yeah, like some people are really creative. Like I see a lot of producers doing their own little thing, like live streams. And so if you can find your niche and you know build on that, work on that, it, I think that's 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 what I would personally say would be the best thing. Like just find your thing and just just roll with it, man. So. If we're talking about live shows, we'll, we'll look back first. Do you remember your first DJ set? Oh, bro, I remember my first DJ set, man. Fuck it up. Yeah, it was. Um, I was eighteen. It was in Leeds for, and it was an event called Reminisce. Uh, my first show. You know what I mean, I was fucking gassed. Holy Goof was the fucking headliner, and that I was loving his tunes at the moment as well. I remember walking in there, I was like, ah, Holy Goof! Uh, he just came. <laughs> I was like, Is it right if I play one of your songs? And it was like, yeah, man, you know, it's all good. And then, um, yeah, I went on there. And you know, like, you meant to export your tunes through record box and then onto USB. Yeah. Didn't fucking do that. So I was like, I was just mixing, like, like with no fear. I was like, fuck. So it's all right, though, because I'm not too sick on vinyl. But, like, I kind of get an understanding because my dad does DJing as well. So that's partly what I got into oh, DJing. Okay. Yeah, so that's why I got into DJing. So I had, like, a understanding but yeah i remember um at one point i uh, completely it was my first set using like the proper equipment and that i completely forgot to i was mixing out a tune i was just gonna drop the next tune straight in and me being a little drunk dickhead completely forgot to do it and then uh it was quiet for like two seconds and i dropped it in everyone was like yo <laughs> i was like yeah i'm meant to do that still so like, it was so unintentionally like, sick was sick man i was like yeah trust me <laughs> So completely by accident, but yeah, it worked. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. That's all that matters then, as long as you got the reaction. Yeah. So moving forward, uh, obviously that show must must have been a really crazy experience. Since where's been your best and if you want to say your worst place to play? Oof. Do you know? What? I'll be honest. I don't. I've not really had any worst place to play. It's like everywhere I've played, all the events companies have been really nice. The hospitality's been on point. Everything's been on point. Like. Yeah, everyone in the scene is really nice and that. So I can't really think of a, a place specifically or an event that's been bad. Like, yeah, but the best place, oh, it's got to be Springfest with Kajama last year. That was fucking sick. I had well good time with that man. That, yeah. The spring fest is that the spring break one in Amsterdam or is that a different one? Am I uh, the wrong thing? It's in the UK. It's run. It's things like uh, similar people that do like bass fest and that. It's just okay. like it's, it's just like spring like springtime version of that. But yeah, that was like my first uh, big big crowd. I was absolutely shitting it before and like. 
But it's not like you went on, I'm used to it now. I was like two tunes there, I was doing my thing, I had a sick time, everyone there was having a good time and I went into the crowd after, I had a little little bogey and that to Saudi Media uh, and that. Yeah, yeah, it was sick, man. I loved it, I loved it. Nice, so you, you were you back to back with Kajama there? Yeah, 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 I was, yeah. H- who would be your dream person to back to back with? Woo! Uh, dream person to back to back with? Probably. I've got to say, AC Slayer, Skepsis, Daxi, his, his sets are fucking mad, that would be sick. Uh, trying to think, do you, I don't really have math. <clears throat> I mean, it's got to be, yeah, probably one of them guys, to be fair, yeah. Yeah. Not Holy Goof to bring it back to that first ever one? Oh, that'll be sick, man. That, 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 that'll be sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, speaking, when shows get back, are there any cities, any places across the world you, you haven't been that you want to get uh, ticked off? Uh, I want to go everywhere. I want to get everywhere ticked off. I want to go yeah. whole, everywhere. I want to be absolutely everywhere, man. Yeah. And any, like, festivals, clubs, anything in particular? Um... I want to get on to. I want to do the bass fest. If there's one of the like the bass fest New Year's Eve, so I'll, probably not this year, but you know next year. That that's been one of my one of my main goals to get on to uh, EDC EDC Las Vegas. That would be fucking sick. Nice. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, I really want to go try tour Australia. Like that that that's one of my main goals at the moment as well. Okay. America and tour North America as well. Yeah, that's 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 probably the main ones to be fair. Yeah, nice. Some good aspirations there as well. So that's your touring. As for new music, I know you've just had Rift Up Roses come out, and the last thing you want to be hearing is people asking for more music. But what have you got in store? Right, yeah. So boom, I've got um, what have I got? What have I got? I've got loads. I've got. I don't want to say too much, but I've got a tune coming out on a compilation in November. I may have another tune coming out early November or late October. That's a maybe. Uh, possibly another tune in December. A certified EP for February. Definitely some of my best work on there. It's, it's insane, but I'm fucking okay. loving it. That's, that's with a good label as well. And loads of releases died in and out. Just every, just Each month, just expect a new J Fader tune. Okay, so you're taking over now, yeah? Yeah, it's takeover season, man. Time to move aside. So... <laughs> Sort of winding down, uh, I've got a few sort of shorter answer, quick fire questions. We can go into depth with them if you want. Um, but first one, what would you be doing if it weren't for music? Uh, probably be doing something construction, man, like bricky electrician. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Fair enough. Um, who's your dream collab? Dream collab, probably do do do, Kirby. Kirby, okay. Um, who, as a as a fan, who do you most want to see live that you haven't seen yet? Uh, it's actually a French like musician called FKJ, like completely out of like not dance music. He does like a it's like slow jazzy hip hop stuff, and that's that's okay. my kind of vibe. You know what I mean? I love to sit there, and vibe out, and watch that. That's like my dream like, concert to go to, man. I'd love that. So, so aside from baseline and that, what actual music are you into? What do you listen to day to day? I know it sounds really corny, but it's a bit of everything, like drill, hip hop, alternative rap, um, jazzy, this jazzy hip hop. I don't really know what to put it into. It's like jazzy hip hop, yeah. uh, house, deep house. Tiny little tiny bit of tech. If if I get <laughs> if, if I get for, if I get forced to at a party, but I don't mind. Okay, but okay. Like, yeah, yeah, man. That's the only time it's acceptable, right? That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are the last three songs you've listened to? Uh, uh, Unholy by New Bass. Uh, did, 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 I actually can't remember because I was last year. I think I listened to this for this. Uh, Depths. No, Depths. I don't know, I think I was the song of the Holy Good. I don't know. I actually can't remember. I think we have to skip that one because I can't remember. Okay, okay, no, no worries. So, on Bayside, we have a couple of series that we do every week, every month. Uh, one of them is Making a Buzz, and that is basically looking at some upcoming artists or someone who's just smashing it right now. Uh, if you were choosing someone in the scene, uh, aside from yourself, who is making a buzz right now, who are you picking? Might I say a couple? of that i would say i would say look out for kd wired and cookie they're they're two big ones to look yeah. out for man definitely yeah can't go wrong with that another one of our series uh which came out today of recording which is thursday is the hall of fame series who would go in your hall of fame 
Oof. Oof. Flavor D. Yeah, yes. that's a good shout. Very yeah. good shout. She's sick, man. Mad versatile producer. She's so sick. Yeah. Um, so then my last question then really, uh, which I asked Selector on our first ever interview uh, and I asked Sean Dean as well. Um, where do you want to be in five years' time? Five years' time. So I'm 23, 24 next month, about 29. In five years' time, I want to be touring the world. I want to be touring the world. I don't know, I'm not yeah. I'm touring the world. Might have a girlfriend, might have a couple of baby mums here and there, but touring the world, okay. man. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, man. <laughs> yeah, just touring the world and having fun, man. Just enjoying myself, making the most of myself, man. Amazing. Well, it, it's been sick to talk to you. Like, uh, I love the energy. You haven't stopped moving, which is <laughs> <That> was, <yeah. laughs> it's been amazing. But keep doing what you're doing. Music's been so good recently. Like, been loving it. And thank it's you, been a pleasure to talk that. to you. Thanks for coming on the channel as well. All right, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. All right, peace. All right, take it easy, man.